<clears throat> Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's sports podcast. Um, it's Friday, um, the 18th of February, 2022, and I've just looked outside again. It started raining, so we're in for a stormy weekend by the seams of it. <clears throat> so I'd just like to point out before we start that if you're going to any live sporting events this weekend, it's probably wise to check um, with the club first to make sure the event is still on. Um, obviously, the uh, forecast of some areas has been given as uh, code red, which is uh, very rare. Um, so just keep an eye on that, but hopefully it won't disrupt the sport too much and then we'll be able to see some good action. Okay, we'll start as usual, we do with football and we'll talk about the Premier League and um, look back at last week's action and look forward to this weekend's games. Um, at the top of the Premier League, Manchester City and Liverpool are still going ahead and getting away from the rest a little bit now with Chelsea having been away at the World Club Championship, but they both um, had victories last um, last weekend, um, Manchester City. City had a 4 0 win at um, Norwich. Um, they had a bit of a fright before they even opened the scoring um, when Norwich hit the post, but other than that, it was a fairly smooth ride. So um, they're still well clear. Liverpool, I think Liverpool are still nine points behind with one game in hand. Um, they had a 1 0 um, squeeze home with a 1 0 victory at Turf Moor against Burnley. Fabinho scoring a winning goal, I think it was towards the end of the first half. Um, it obviously is always a tough place to go to, especially when the weather's not great. Um, but yeah. Um, one nil to a pool there, so that's uh, they're still getting ahead from rest, getting away from the pack still. Um, Chelsea, uh, congratulations to Chelsea, they were away and they won um, the World Club Championship to beat um, Palmeiras two one after extra time in the final last Saturday. But they were back to Premier League action this weekend. And Manchester United have moved up to fourth now. Um, they had a bit of a little, a little bit of a disappointed draw at home to Southampton last Saturday on the BT Sport Live game. But to be fair, Southampton did play well. Um, but midweek they had a home game, a game in hand against Brighton, which they won 2-0. Again, Brighton was probably the better team in the first half, but didn't score. And then conceded the goal to Ronaldo after 51 minutes. And then three minutes later, Lewis Dunk was given a yellow card. And it was viewed on VAR and changed to a red, deemed to be the last man. Um, but they hung on at 1-0 for most of the rest of the game. Um, Danny Welbeck had a really good chance to equalise just at the end of the match. But he wasted that and then they got punished. By Bruno Fernandes on the counter attack at the end in extra in injury time to make the final score two 0 and that puts Manchester United back up to fourth place ahead of their big game this weekend away to Leeds. Um, uh, other than that, um, elsewhere in the games last weekend, Newcastle had a good win against Aston Villa. Villa didn't play too well, I've got to say, but they still probably should have deserved a draw out of it. A bit unlucky with Ollie Watkins just allowed goal for offside. Apparently, it was the closest decision has been this season. Doesn't make him feel any better about it. it. Didn't make me feel any better about it. But uh, it was a good result for Newcastle. Disappointing result for Leeds after a good draw at Villa the previous Wednesday. They were beaten heavily 3 0 at Old Everton. A game I thought Leeds probably could win, but we didn't perform. And that's the problem with Leeds. You never know what you're going to get with them. So, but Newcastle did. And Everton both um, picked up vital points there. So um, that puts them in a better position than they were before last weekend when they were obviously they're both still involved in relegation fight. Leeds could get dragged into it as well. So. We'll see what happens there. Um, this weekend, fifth place West Ham are the uh, host um, Newcastle actually in the BT Sport lunchtime game Saturday 12:30 kickoff on BT Sport. Then the other live TV games 5:30 Saturday evening on Sky Manchester City home to Tottenham, and the two Sunday Sky games 2 p.m. is the aforementioned Leeds against Manchester United game, and half past four it's uh, Wolves against Leicester. Uh, personally, I'd rather see those games the other way around. The Leeds Manchester United game will always be more important than Wolves against Leicester to most football fans, I would say. Um, but there's a, the TV games this weekend. Um, we've also got four midweek games coming up three on Wednesday, one on Thursday. The highlight of those games third is Wednesday night, 7 45 at Anfield, Liverpool against Leeds. Uh, I think that's the one that most people will be looking forward to seeing. So, yeah, we'll come back and round those up next weekend. Um, moving on from. Uh, Premier League to the European competitions and during the week the Champions League returned and there were handsome victories for well especially for Manchester City 5-0 away in Lisbon they won against Sporting Club and Liverpool had a 2-0 victory against uh, Inter over in Milan at San Siro so they'll be confident of, uh, reaching the next round of the knockout stages they were the first legs away from home you expect them to finish it off at home we've got Chelsea and Manchester United in action this week I think Chelsea at home to Lille on Tuesday night and uh, Manchester United are away, uh, are away on um, Wednesday night in their game. And I can't remember the playing. <laughs> but this is on Wednesday. It won't be easy. I know that. So I think they're playing Villarreal. But they're not playing Villarreal. So 
Um, but yeah, the Manchester United play on Wednesday um, in their game. And um, also the games that have been played this week, the first leg of the games. PSG um, defeated Real Madrid 1-0. In their um, in their game, in the first leg at the Parc de France, and in the uh, other match, surprisingly good result for RB Salzburg. Um, they managed a one-all draw at home to uh, Bayern Munich, so that's a good result for them. But I still think Bayern will fancy their chance in the second leg. So that's where we are with the Champions League. Um, On to the Europa League, and um, we had a victory for Rangers in their playoff game. A, a very good victory away to Dortmund. Four get four goals to two. Um, Dortmund were a w- missing Erling Haaland, and you could tell. Um, it said a report I watched last night said, but basically Jude Bellingham was taking on Rangers on his own. He might as well have been. Um, so Rangers are in a really good position coming to the second leg. But obviously, as, as with all the European competitions this season, away goals don't count double, so it doesn't mean Dortmund could just come to Rangers and get a 2-0 win and get it to take it to extra time, so um, you've got to bear that in mind. I'm not saying that'll happen, but something to consider. Um, and in the Europa Conference League, Leicester got off to a bit of a shaky start. They were one all at half-time. They played really well in the first half, and then they conceded from their only real chance they conceded the goal at the just won the stroke of half-time. <coughs> but in the end up, they managed to beat... Um, Randers from Denmark, four goals to one, so they're in a good position to go through. I think the second legs of these games are next Thursday, actually, because there's an extra round to fit in alongside the Champions League and uh, the Europa League main draw. So that was a 4-1 win there. But Celtic uh, were beaten 3-1 at home by Bodo Glimt, the team from Norway, who sounds like something out of Lord of the Rings, in my opinion. That's not a good result, and they're facing uh, elimination from Europe for the rest of the season. Um, So... They've got a lot of work to do in their second leg. So that's where we are with the uh, European competitions after the first leg matches this week. Um, like I say, the Champions League second legs, uh, uh, sorry, first legs, the other two, uh, last 16, uh, the four last 16 matches are next week, along with the second legs of those playoff games in both the Europa League and the Conference, the Europa Conference League. Um, now we're going to move away from that and talk about the uh, National League and FC Halifax Town, unfortunately, were eliminated from the... FA Trophy last weekend, put up a good fight but ended up losing near to the end, two goals to one at home to Notts County. Um, so now as we always say we can concentrate on our position in the league and try to secure our, our cement our place in the playoffs. Um, they've got some big games coming up, um, Dover at home tomorrow, hopefully the weather won't spoil that and call it off because it's a game we need to win. They are the bottom of Dover, it's one we'd expect us to win, you never take anything for granted. We need to win, because we've also got a tough match during the week away. It's again, Notts County away, but this time in the league, um, which isn't going to be easy. So um, we've got that. And then the following Saturday, we've got Bar- um, we've got Barnett at home. So we've got Dover this Saturday and Barnett the following Saturday. Two games they expect us to win, weather permitting, and keep us up in those playoffs. Um, at, the, at the very top, um, we're now in fourth place, but and because Boreham Wood actually won midweek. They won 2-0 at home to Altrincham. Um so that's put them into third above us at the top. Stockport are three points in front of Chesterfield. Chesterfield have a game in hand. Stockport won um, 2 0 at Bromley on Tuesday night. Now that does us a favour in some respects because Bromley losing helps us in terms of uh, the playoff positions. Um, so it's um, all to play for still. Um, Chesterfield have got two really tough home games coming up this next week or so. They've got um, their home tomorrow. They play, take on sixth place Solihull Moors. Um, and then on Tuesday, they play seventh place Wrexham at home. So those two tough home matches for Chesterfield have had a bit of a wobble at the moment, a couple of draws. They've now got Paul Cook in place as the manager. So <clears throat> their fans will be hoping that they pick up from there um, from where they, and go back to where they were. Obviously, having lost um, Kabongo Shimanga to a nasty ankle injury, um, I haven't seen anything definite how long he'll be out for. I would suggest he'll be out for most, if not all, the rest of the season. But they have still got Asante up front, and they've got plenty of other players. Um, that can cover for them, so it shouldn't affect them too much in terms of um, the actual overall performance and um, up, um, the uh, attacking third of the field, so we'll see how they get on there. Um, <clears throat> that's what's going on in the world of football. Now uh, we're going to look at <coughs> Rugby League, and we'll start with looking at last night's Super League result, where Warrington defeated Castleford comfortably by 34 points to 10. Um, tonight is the big game this weekend, it's Wigan versus Leeds live on Sky also. So that's the one, if you're a big Super League fan, that's the one to watch. Uh, we're not going to talk about the doping issues that have come out this week. That's not to do with this podcast. We just talk about sport, not politics or anything off, off the field, really. Um, in the Championship, 
Halifax need to get back to winning ways or a way to Workington on Sunday after suffering a really narrow 9-8 defeat at home to, to witness at the Shale last Sunday. They were disappointed with that. Witness dropped a goal about 15 minutes to go and Halifax couldn't find a way through to get back into the game and like I said, he went down by a single point. They'll fancy the chance of beating Workington, one of the weaker teams in the league. Um, they're away there on Sunday. I know there's people always say it's a tough place to go to but Halifax, if they want to do well this season, they need to be beating teams like um, Workington. 2pm kickoff there. Um, so that's the one to watch out for this weekend to have Halifax Rugby League fans. Um, rugby Union and um, the Six Nations takes a break this weekend after two really competitive opening weekend rounds. Um, France are the only unbeaten team after two rounds. They've got nine points. Um, they're doing really well so far. England got back to winning ways against Italy. Comfortable win in Italy last Sunday. And there were wins also for... Um, there were wins also for... Um, should I say it? Wales, they beat Scotland, France beat Ireland in a tough match there, close match there. But Ireland and Wales, Scotland, England, all still in with a shout, obviously after these two rounds gone. And uh, we'll do a preview next week, kind of the third round of the games when they come up. Um, NFL, the Super Bowl was last weekend. Disappointment for the Bengals fans, unfortunately. They came up slightly short at the end, losing out to the Rams. They lay Rams by 23 points to 20 in the final reckoning. They'd led most of the way, and um, they were leading going to the final quarter. quarter um, but there was uh, a, a touchdown in the last quarter, which swung the game in the favour of the Rams. So after being 2016 down, coming into the fourth quarter, they actually won 23 points to uh, 20. So a good competitive match. Um, a friend said he watched it. I don't think he really likes American football, but it's because his other friends do watch it as well. And um, he claims to be a Cardinals fan. I've no idea if he knows much about American football. I mean, he's been to America, but there you go. Um, but um, the comment he said was he, he turned it off when he asked time the show came on. Some people only watched it for that, as far as I'm aware. So, <clears throat> unlucky. Okay, so that's what's happened in, what happened in the Super Bowl. And the season will be back for American football fans. I think the pre-season is sort of like July, August. So, we'll, uh, we'll bring up to date of any important news. I'm sure my uh, regular NFL correspondents will... Uh, give me any news of breaking news obviously one thing from the Super Bowl was that the opening touchdown was scored by Odell Beckham Jr who transferred mid-season so he won the Super Bowl by transferring so good move on his behalf or on his part should I say ok moving on now and uh, last night we saw the third round of the uh, Premier League darts tournament or should I say weekly competition and it was Gerwin Price who won last night and he managed to achieve something only Phil Taylor has done before 2-9 darters on the same evening Having not had a TV9 data until the New Year's Day in the semi final of the World Championship, he's now got three in the space of about seven or eight weeks. Um, he beat James Wade in the final um, by six legs to four. He's been a bit topsy turvy so far, very competitive. Jolly Clayton was knocked out in the first round this week, um, but he's still top because Price won. So he's got now basically Clayton's got eight and Price is one point behind on seven. It's all bunched up behind him pretty much. So. Um, all to play for, I think there's 17 weeks altogether, so it's not like there's any rush to get you know to the top of the table now. As long as you're in the positions when you get near to the sharp end of the tournament, you'll be okay. Um, and then last week, last thing this week I'm going to talk about is um, cricket. Um, New Zealand taking on South Africa at the moment in a two test series. I don't see the point in a two test series. Um, I'm not sure how seriously the teams are taking it, but New Zealand seem to be taking it more seriously than South Africa. South Africa are really in trouble after two days. They were bowled out for 95 in the first innings. Matt Henry on his home ground um, at the Hagley Oval took 7 for 23. It's his home ground, like I say. He's had two previous test marks there. And I don't think he's taken a wicket and gone for like an average. He's conceded like 200 runs or his average is 200 as a bowler. Um, but he took 7 for 23 and then um, destroyed the, the South African batting lineup. Then New Zealand have battered. They've scored 482. Henry came in and batted at number 11 and scored 58 not out. <laughs> Um, that's Henry Nichols scored 100 as well he got 105 I think Tom Blundell the wicket keeper scored 96 as well um, so they've got 482 all out and then South Africa are batting again and they're 34 for 3 and that's after 2 days so it's probably going to be over tonight or tomorrow morning by the time you get up it'll probably be all over um, South Africa had a couple, a couple of new players making debuts Sturman and Elwe I've never heard of either of them Elwe scored 10 in his first game in his first innings and he got a duck, a second ball duck in his second innings. Sturman got a first ball duck and got one wicket for 124. That's not very good. 
Um, Kane Williamson's not playing for not New Zealand, the captain. Um, South Africa, De Cox retired from Test cricket, I think. And um, there was no Duplassier, I don't know if he's retired as well. So Dean Elgar's a captain, but it was a bit of a second, like, it looks like a patched up team, really. I'm not sure how serious they're taking it. This is the problem with Test cricket at the moment. I don't know how seriously they're taking it, but it should be doing. Anyway, that's where we are. Uh, in terms of that match, it looks like it's going to be a convincing victory for New Zealand. So basically, South Africa, because it's only two matches, they can't win the series already. Um, and domestic cricket, just to mention that um, Yorkshire have announced that Kabir Ali, the f I think he played as a bowler for England. I know he was a bowler, but I think he played for England actually. I don't know how many test matches he played, or whether he just played one day. As he's been named the assistant coach at Yorkshire. That was the news from Headingley this week. So I think that's just about it. Um, hope I haven't missed anything out. Um, just to say, stay safe out there. The weather's not going to be good in the next couple of days. Um, if you don't have to go out, probably best not to go out. Uh, just watch the sport live on TV. Uh, and until next Friday, I'm going to say goodbye. Thanks for watching as always, and see you then.